Yeah, that's that's a, a, a critical point, isn't it? I'm always struck by the complacency of U.S. media coverage on some of these bigger questions. And I was interested to see that when, for example, uh, Russia and India decide to do a big energy deal in rubles, and uh, then when Moscow tries to impose a ruble deal on Germany and other EU members, uh, the word on Was- the word in Washington and on Wall Street is, oh, don't worry about this. It's uh, don't make a big deal about this. It's none to worry about. It strikes me as significant. It is very significant. Mm-hmm. Whether or not they're worried about it or lying about not being worried about it, it's it's hard to say. But our trade deficits have never been bigger, uh, and so we've never been more dependent on the dollar's reserve status, and so we've never had more at risk if that status is lost. And, you know, interestingly enough, and not that many people talk about this, but the Russian ruble is actually higher now against the dollar than it was before the invasion. I mean, there was an initial plunge (laughs) where the ruble was down almost 40 percent, but it's now up about 4 percent since the invasion. Now, the ruble is still quite a bit lower than it was a year ago, but it's interesting that it's rallied, uh, you know, off those lows and is now higher than it was pre-invasion. Uh, I remember when Biden was bragging about how much value the ruble had lost. And I was uh, saying to myself, well, imagine how much value the dollar is going to lose as a result of what we're helping to push uh, Russia and the rest of the world into as we push them away from the U.S. dollar.